Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again and welcome back to AEL. Now if you're new to this channel, please consider going down below and subscribing if you haven't done so already. Cheers. Now, when we talk about amplifier stability, we're not talking about thermal stability, although that is a factor. What we're mainly talking about is, is the amplifier stable when connected to a load and varying different types of loads like 4 ohm, 8 ohm, 16 ohm and capacitive loading as well uh, when it's not producing a signal and when it is producing a signal and that it does not go into spurious oscillations for no reason. So you'll often see in specifications of power amplifiers this term Stability unconditional. Okay, and what that basically means is this amplifier, well, not this particular one, but the amplifier they're talking about, does not go into any spurious oscillations under any varying load conditions. And that's the entire point. And it should also be thermally stable as well. Let's make that clear. So how do we test an amplifier to see if it is actually stable? Well we inject a signal into the amplifier, a square wave such as 10 kilohertz is a good starting point and we load the amplifier into various different loads like 4 and 8 etc and we add some capacitance on the uh, in parallel with the load as well um, to see if the amplifier remains stable. And what we don't want to see is when it's amplifying the signal, we don't want to see this. I've drawn that wrong already. We don't want to see a sine wave that looks like that with all this bouncing and ringing on the peaks. What we want to see is a flat top and a flat bottom with no signs of visible ringing. And that's what we mean about it being stable. If there's ringing on that sine wave, on that flat top and flat bottom, well, the amplifier is oscillating and probably into the several hundreds of kilohertz range, if not megahertz range. And an amplifier that oscillates is not really useful at all because then that leads to thermal instability because that extra oscillating that the amplifier is doing is causing the output stage to heat up more because, well, it's oscillating and it's going into the load. So you'll probably end up with a condition known as thermal runaway. So I'm going to demonstrate how we're going to test this and I'm going to use a function generator and an amplifier module that's sitting handily off to my right here, not this one. Um, I should really be running this sort of test on amplifiers I build like this design here. But I've got to redo the PCB on this anyway, so I'll, I'll do that in a separate video. However, I'm going to use the Elector PA300 power amplifier module that I've built in a previous video and see if it is audibly stable. So it is hooked up, it's turned on, it's going into an 8 ohm dummy load at the moment. The oscillator is running a square wave at 10,000 hertz or 10 kilohertz. And we are seeing an output on the oscilloscope screen. And ignoring the fact that it's not quite a perfect square wave, that's mainly the amplifier distorting the signal slightly. Uh, we increase our uh, amplitude and if I change that so we've got less waveforms on the screen and maybe shift that down a bit we can see that that waveform apart from the fact that it's fuzzing around a bit but it's not got that bouncing ringing thing going on on the flat top and the flat bottom. They're perfectly flat and well flat. So that proves that into an 8 ohm load at least, well 
the signal is relatively stable and the amplifier is not oscillating. I'll turn the oscillator down and I'll swap my load to 4 ohms and if I can get that unplugged Okay, so I increase the oscillator and that's only because I'm going into current limiting. So we back that off so it's out of current limit. There we go. We can see that it is, again, a lot lower in amplitude, but it is stable. There is no visible signs much of oscillating. I mean, it could also be the connections and the wires going everywhere too. It might be picking up noise on the input because of how the um, input cable is connected here. So what we do next is we take a capacitor, in this case a 100 nanofarad capacitor, and we put it in parallel with the load output and see if the signal changes or it remains stable. So this is going to be awkward to do. I've got a set of test leads here hooked up across the capacitor. Now I'll hook this up across the load. nothing changed. It looks exactly the same as it did before. So, however, I am not seeing a bounce and a ring, so it's not actually oscillating. I think that's more noise pickup on the input. So what I might do is I'll turn that back down. I'll now reconfigure this for 8 ohms and move that capacitor over to the ground here. I mean as we can see on the output of the scope it is picking up noise anyway so that's probably where that extra noise on the waveform was coming from. But as we see well it's about the same as it was in the force so no the amplifier is stable it's not ringing. I'll just disconnect the capacitor no difference. Exactly the same. So we can say that the stability of this amplifier, especially when going into a capacitive load like I've just imitated, is unconditional. And that's the whole entire point of this little inductor and resistor combination in parallel with each other. That's supposed to stop it from going into spurious oscillation. I mean, I could test it by now connecting my output point before the inductor and see if it makes a difference. So I've turned the oscillator down and either point of these two resistors is fine. That's the output point. So I'll connect it there. The capacitor is still across the output load. Now, nah, even without the inductor, it's stable. Isn't that nice? So I'll swap back to the correct output point. And I will now change the value of the capacitance. So I might go 10 nanofarad if I can find one. Well, I found a 22 nanofarad. I really should kill the power before doing this change, so I'm not shorting stuff. I'll take that capacitor out of circuit. And I'll now connect this used 22 nanofarad in parallel now with the output. And we go. As long as they don't short, it's fine. Turn the supplies back on. I really need to move that isopropyl alcohol bottle. It's kind of in the way. So I'll increase the oscillator. It's still stable. So I'm going to say with quite good confidence that the amplifier is stable with varying low conditions. I'm just touching ground points to see if that noise will go away, but I'm pretty sure it's just picking it up through the leads of the oscillator. But, yeah, no, it's stable. And that's how we test an amplifier to see if it's stable. So just to verify the difference in capacitance on the output here, is we will disconnect that first, move our load around to four, and if I can get that to connect, Excellent. However, I don't want it touching heatsink if I can avoid it. And I'll reconnect the capacitance. And it is still turned on. Shouldn't really be hot swapping, but yeah, whatever. 
yeah, it's still relatively stable. So that's perfectly fine. So what I might try now, I will series these two sets of 8 ohm loads to make it 16 ohm. To, we're going to have half the power as it would be into 8, but we just want to see if the amplifier remains stable at a 16 ohm load. Alright, I believe that's connected in series now, so we've got the input coming into here, this is the hot side, goes through this resistor network which is 8 ohms, then it's fed over to this resistor network which is in series with this resistor and this point is the ground. So that should equate to 16 ohms. Power supplies are off. I'm going to move that because it's annoying me. Turn them on. Mm, excellent. It is producing an output at 16 ohms. Which, well, it should. However, the capacitor is not connected across the load yet either. So... I don't seem to have an extra flywire to extend the end of that capacitor. Mm, give me a minute. Now I do. So I'll connect this to a capacitor point, which is on the negative side. Make sure it does not short on anything. And I'll bring it over to the amplifier's negative point on the load. Still producing exactly the same signal. And honestly, we should also be testing at different frequencies as well. 10 kilohertz is good because that's up where it, an amplifier is going to start oscillating. But I might change that to, I'm going to say, 5,000 hertz. So 5 kilohertz. And see if it still remains st stable into 16 ohms. Indeed. And we also want to see if it's stable at different amplitudes too which it does appear to be for the most part. All this extra noise I'm seeing, as I've said, is not oscillation, it's just noise. And I've tested a lot of amplifiers that seem to do that. It's probably just my connection points more than anything else. Okay, so let's try 1 kilohertz, the favourite frequency of all amplifiers. Um, that's still stable. I'm gonna say that's winner winner chicken dinner. Um, so yeah that's that's how we get a basic test of an amplifier to see if its stability is unconditional. If we can get it to go into oscillation by adding capacitor on the output well then yeah the amplifier is not unconditionally stable. It can actually be made to oscillate which is not a great thing for an amplifier to be doing. I'm the Astro 30 and if you enjoyed this video please remember to go down below, like, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always this is the Astro 30 saying see ya, thanks for watching, have a great day.